pretends. Today we're going to look at midpoint theorem. Well, we're going to start that section. And to start the midpoint theorem, we need to revise parallelograms and Euclidean geometry. So this must go in your second book, book number two, because it will be in paper two. And we're doing Euclidean geometry. For um, your examples, at the beginning of the year in first term, each of you got this paper that was created by Ms. Peters as an extra maths lesson. So you should all have this in your files, in your Euclidean geometry section. So I'm just going to look at each of these questions with you and revise Euclidean geometry, and then you're going to do the exercise that's required of you to do before we do midpoints. So before we get into the exercise grade 10, let's just remember what a palm is. A palm is a quadrilateral, four-sided shape that is um, very special because the opposite sides of a palm are parallel. So if I've got a quadrilateral A, B, C, D, and I say to you this is a palm, there's various properties that will be in this shape. The first property is that opposite sides are parallel. So C, D would be parallel to A, B, and A, C would be parallel to B, D. And that's basically what makes a palm a palm. Parallelogram. Parallel. Parallel lines in this four-sided shape. So that's the first property. The second property says that opposite angles are equal. So that means all of angle C is equal to all of angle B. And all of angle A must be equal to all of angle D. Opposite sides are equal. The next property says that diagonals bisect. I'm going to just quickly look at this one. It says opposite sides are equal. So that means not only is AD parallel to CD, but AD is also equal in length to CD. And not only is AC parallel to BD, but AC is also equal in length to BD. So those are the basic things that make a part. Let's talk about this. Diagonals bisect. Do you remember what a diagonal is? It travels from corner to corner. And when they bisect, the difference between bisect and intersect, intersect means that they cross one another. Bisecting means that they cross each other halfway. So they break it into two equal parts. So in other words, that line, if I had to label this point O, AO would be equal to OP. And then CO would be equal to OB. That's another property of a palm. And the last property of a palm that we use often to prove if a quadrilateral is a palm is that one pair of sides are equal and parallel. So if I gave you a parallelogram, or if I gave you a quadrilateral, and I said to you that this line is parallel and they're equal, you immediately know that it's a palm. And that all these other properties also apply to this shape. Remember the different kinds of palms we get? We get rectangles, we get squares, we get a parallelogram, which is a skew rectangle, and we get a rhombus. Remember, a kite is not a palm, and a trapezium is not a palm either. So, not forgetting our different properties of our palms. So the first question we look at says, in quadrilateral A, B, C, D, that's the first important word, they don't tell us it's a palm. So we cannot assume that all those properties of a palm that we just discussed apply to the shape. So we have in quadrilateral A, B, C, D, the line A, D, A, D, is parallel to the line B, C. It's not filled in in our picture, so if you want to go ahead and fill it in on your picture to show that those two lines are parallel. And we're also given that angle B is equal to angle D. Let's look at our instruction. It says prove that ABCD is a parallelogram. Now remember to prove if it is a parallelogram. We need to find one of those four prop uh, one of those five properties of a palm that we just discussed. Either opposite sides are parallel, opposite sides are equal, opposite angles are equal, diagonals bisect, or one pair of sides equal and parallel. So you need to look for one of those things, and if you find one of those things, then this whole shape would be a palm. 
Now, what am I going to exclude? I'm definitely going to exclude the idea that diagonals bisect. Why? Because we're only given one diagonal. So let's not even consider that. Don't forget that often when we prove palms, we often also use congruency in our triangles. Because if I can prove that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle ACD, I know then that my opposite sides must be equal to one another. Because if this triangle is exactly the same as this triangle, then this line must be the same as that line, and that line must be the same as that line. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. I'm going to prove congruency between the two triangles to prove that it's a palm. Remember, in a palm, when we've got parallel lines, as soon as you see parallel lines, what should you be thinking of? Finding fun angles. So those are the ideas and the knowledge that I have in my head that I'm now going to use to solve this question. So, in this question, remember you need a statement and a reason table, so please draw it up. Like I said, I'm going to do congruency, so I'm going to tell the marker in my triangles that I'm working. I'm working in triangle ABC, and I'm working in triangle ACD. And I'm going to prove congruency. What are my conditions of congruency? Side, side, side. Side, angle, side, side, angle, angle, right up to new side. So I'm aiming for one of these. Remember, when we're doing side, angle, side, it must be the included angle. All right, so what do I already know about this triangle and this triangle? I'm already given that angle B equals angle D. So angle B equals angle D. How do I know this? It was given to us. Okay. What other information can I use? This line here, AC, they share the line AC. AC is in the triangle ABC, and AC is also in triangle ACD. So they have this line in common. So therefore I can say that AC equals AC, and the line is in common. So, so far I've got an angle, and I've got a side. So according to these properties, I'm either going to find another angle or another side. I'm going to eliminate these ideas for now because from the information I already have. Okay, using my fun angles, what do I notice? I notice alternating angles and I can see that C1 is equal to A2 because of alternating angles. So angle C1 equals angle A2. Alt angles. What do you need to put? Which lines were parallel? AD is parallel to BC, and I've got an angle. Is this a condition of congruency? Side, angle, angle. Yes, indeed it is. So therefore, I can conclude that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle ACD by side, angle, angle. Now that I've proved congruency, what do I know? There's lots of things that I know now about these triangles, but the most important thing I know is this line BC is exactly the same as that line AD. So they're the same length. What else do I know about these triangles? I know that line AB is exactly the same as the size of the line CD. So what do I have? Opposite sides are equal, and therefore I can prove it's a part. So I just erased my board and kind of moved it up because I'm running out of space. So we concluded that the two triangles were um, congruent. So therefore, what do I know? I therefore know, like we just said, that AD is equal to BC, okay? Because of um, proven above, because they were congruent, okay? And I also know that AB equals CD, and that is also proven above because the two triangles are congruent. So therefore, if I've got two sets of lines that are parallel to one another, are equal to one another, and they're opposite one another, I can conclude that ABCD is indeed a palm. And what is my reason? Because opposite sides are equal. And that finishes that question. 
So this is the next question in your worksheet, grade 10. And we're just going to skip it for now because this question is repeated later on. Let's just do it because it's quite a difficult question. So let's just do two or three more easier questions and we'll come back to this more difficult question. Okay, so this is the next question we're looking at, grade 10. It says that PQRS is a part. So this is important. We know that this quadrilateral here, PQRS, is a parallelogram. So all of those properties apply. Not only are the opposite sides parallel, as they've indicated, but the opposite sides are equal. So that side's equal to that side, and this side, which has a single line, is equal to that side. What else happens? We also know that opposite angles are equal to one another, and if they were diagonals, we would know that diagonals bisect one another. So, remember that we're told it's a part. We're also told that SR is equal to ST, and they have given that to us in our picture. SR is equal to ST, and we're told that angle P equals 120 degrees. It says, if angle S2 up here is equal to 4X, calculate the value of X. Let's quickly discuss what we see in this picture. Already just from me labeling what I can see happens in this palm, do you agree that I can immediately see that angle R must also be 120 degrees because opposite angles are equal, okay? What is the other thing I notice in this picture? I notice a little triangle here, and it's a special kind of triangle. Two sides are equal. What do we call a triangle where two sides are equal? This is an isosceles triangle. I saw the knees. That's how I always remember it from my grade six maths teacher, Mrs. Knox White, if she would ever hear this video. I never forget isosceles. She always used to talk about I saw the knees. And what do I know happens in an isosceles triangle? Not only are the two sides equal, but the opposite angles in this triangle are also equal to one another. Now remember, in our statement and our reason um, table, you're not allowed to write isosceles triangle. The accepted reason for isosceles is the angles that are opposite equal sides. If you wrote isosceles, you're not going to get the mark. You have to write the angles that are opposite the two equal sides. So that's the bigger picture of things. Let's get into solving this question. Okay, great team. So let's solve. Immediately what we already discussed is that we can see that angle R must also be 120 degrees. So right off the bat, I'm going to tell my marker that I know that angle R, it hasn't been labeled as R1. There's a 2 telling me that that is R2. I'm assuming that this is R1 unless I cannot see it on the board. So it is labeled as R1 on your picture. You'll be able to see it on your picture in front of you because you should have this worksheet from first term. So I'm going to say angle R1 equals 120 degrees. How do I know this? Because opposite angles of palm are equal. I'm told this is a palm, so I know they're equal. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get into this triangle because I want to solve for x. So, how big is angle R2? What do I know is happening or what do I notice is happening along here? I see angles on a straight line. If this is 120 degrees, R2 must simply be 60 degrees. Why? Because angles on a straight line. I know that they're supplementary, they must add up to 180 degrees. So if R2 is equal, we, you and I have already discussed that because this is an isosceles triangle, that angle T must also, so if R2 is 60, angle T must also be 60. So let's solve. Angle T, or not let's solve, but let's tell the marker what we know, must equal 60 degrees. It's an isosceles triangle, but I'm not allowed to write isosceles. What must I write? The angles that are opposite equal sides. So now I'm in the triangle. 60, 60, and what is this whole angle S going to equal? What do I know must happen in the triangle? 
the interior angles of the triangle must add up to 180 degrees. So, how big would angle S2 equal? Angle S2 would equal 180 minus 60 minus 60, which leaves me with 60 degrees. How do, I, how do I know if it's minus the 60 and the 60? Because I know of interior angles of a triangle are supplementary. So that was added to 180, that leaves 60 remaining. Actually, what kind of a triangle is this? If that's also 60, that means this is an equilateral triangle. That's not part of the question, but it's just thinking ahead. So, the question was to solve for x, to find the value of x. We know that s2 is equal to 60, but it's also equal to 4x. So therefore, 4x must equal to 60. Okay? Solve it for x, divide both sides by 4. So solve it for x, we divide both sides by 4, and I end up with x is equal to 15 degrees. And I've solved the equation. Okay, grade 10, so this is the next question we're looking at. It says, in the diagram below, quadrilateral, again, we're not told it's a par, so I cannot apply any of the properties of a palm to the shape, we just know it's a quadrilateral. A, B, C, D. A, B is parallel to C, D. Angle A is equal to 2X. Angle B is equal to X. And angle C is equal to 120 degrees. The first question asks, prove that A, D is parallel to B, C. So they want me to prove this. And what is the best way to prove parallel lines? When I want to prove parallel lines, I always look for fun angles. If I can show that angles are equal, I can prove parallel lines. And then the next question asks, what type of quadrilateral is ABCD? Give a reason for your answer. So let's take a look at this question. Okay, so we're going to prove that this line is parallel to this line, but they've given us a bit of information. I also see these parallel lines, and as soon as you see parallel lines, you should be thinking of fun angles. What fun angle can you see here between these parallel lines? I can see a U. What do I know in a U? It's called co-interior angles, and co-interior angles are supplementary. That means X plus 120, and I'm going to write this down immediately, should give me 180 because co-interior angles are supplementary and I must write down which side of the parallel. AB is parallel to CD. So solving for X, I take 120 over and X is equal to 60. So I'm going to fill it into my picture. X is equal to 60 over here, right? Therefore, how big is angle A? Therefore, angle A, which is 2x, is 2 times 60, which gives me 120 degrees. So angle A is 120 degrees. So remember, we want to prove that lines are parallel. So I want to find fun angles. I'm not going to look for a z. Why? Because um, there's no diagonal. What am I going to see? Aha! I see that 60 and 120 together give me 180. So they're supplementary. So that must mean that there's a U on that side as well. Which would mean that that line would be parallel to that line. Hence, they're proving that the lines are parallel. So I'm going to erase this and then write what I just said to you. So now I'm going to tell the right of the marker. Oh, I can see that angle B plus angle A gives me 180 degrees. If you want to substitute to show them, you can. You can say 60 plus 120 equals 180 degrees. Therefore, because I find that the interior angles are supplementary, I can say that AD must be parallel to BC because I've seen a U, but I can't say because I've seen a U. What is the reason for U? It's co-interior angles are supplementary. And I've answered the first question. 
prove that AD is parallel to BC. And what did I say? AD is parallel to BC. Question 4.2 asks, what type of quadrilateral is ABCD? I hope that you all agree that ABCD is a parallelogram. I'm just going to write palm for short. How do I know it's a palm? Which property does it satisfy? That side is parallel to that side, and that side is parallel to that side. So, what is my reason? I've got AD is parallel to BC, and I also know that AB is parallel to DC. So, therefore, it's a palm because opposite sides are parallel. And that's my answer for 4.2. So the next question looks like this. It says, in the diagram below, ABCD is a palm. So we're told this is a palm. So all those wonderful properties apply to this shape, ABCD. Opposite angles are equal. Opposite sides are equal and parallel. Diagonals bisect. Okay? We're told that CR bisects. Bisects means cut in half. DCE. So this is DCE. If CR bisects it, it means C1 must be equal to C2. And we're also given that CR is parallel to BD. As soon as we see these parallel lines, I hope you're thinking of fun angles because we're going to need to use them. The first question says, prove that BC is equal to CD. So they want me to prove this, that those two lines are equal to one another. Okay, what I want you to see is that when I prove two lines are equal to one another and there's another line crossing here, I just looked at that. Can you see that it's an isosceles triangle? Okay, so if I want to prove that these two are equal, it must mean proving that that angle and that angle are equal. Because if those two angles are equal, then the opposite sides to those angles must also be equal. And hence, I want to solve proving that those two lines are equal. And I'm going to use fun angles. We've just shown that these two are equal because C R bisects. And I'm thinking of fun angles because of parallel lines. So the first fun angle I see is there is a Z. So do you agree that C1 and D1 must be equal to each other? And the next fun angle I can see is I can see an F. So C2 and B2 must be equal. And if these two are equal, and that one's equal to that, and that one's equal to that, that must mean that those two angles are equal. And if these two angles are equal, inside this triangle, the opposite sides must also be equal. And that's how I'm going to solve the first question. Okay, so exactly what I've just said to you, I'm just going to put down pen to paper. We're going to put it down for the marker to mark. So, what do I know? The first thing I know is that these two angles are equal. Why? Because CR bisects that entire angle. So, I'm going to write angle C1 equals angle C2. How come? Because CR bisects, meaning cuts in half, the angle D, C, E. So I've got those two angles that we've got. Now I'm going to use this parallel line idea. I'm going to find the Z over there. So because I can find the Z, I can conclude that angle D1 must equal angle C1. Z, I can't say because I can see a Z, I must write alternating angles. And I must write which lines are parallel. BD is parallel to CR. And then, so now I know that not only is C1 and C2 equal, but C1 also equals D1. So they get the same colors. They're all equal to one another. And now the shape I see is an F over there. So now I know that C2, which is in red, is also equal to B2. And I'm going to write that to the marker. So angle B2 is equal to angle C2. Why? Because I see an F. That's not what I write. 
All right. Corresponding angles. BD is parallel to CR. So what can I conclude? If these two are equal, and C1 equals D1, and C2 equals B2, so if those two are equal, we can conclude, therefore, that angle D1 must equal to angle B2. And we can see that with our colours. They all got red little dots. And indeed, D1 is equal to angle D2. So that's my first conclusion. So because I've concluded that these two angles are equal, in the greater scheme of things, if I had to think of a triangle, if those two angles are equal, then the opposite sides inside that triangle must also be equal because it makes an isosceles triangle. So therefore I can conclude that BC equals CD, which is what they asked. Why does it equal BC? Because the angles that are opposite equal sides. Can't say isosceles triangle. Angles that are opposite equal sides. And there answers right my first question, that these two sides are equal. So your second question, 5.2, says prove that ABCD is a rhombus. What do I now know from 5.1? I now know that BC is equal to CD. And we're told right at the beginning that it's a palm. So all of those properties apply to the shape. And what do I know about the properties of a palm? Opposite sides are equal. So if BC gets one line, its opposite side gets one line. And if CD gets one line, its opposite side also gets one line. What can you can conclude from this? All the lines, not only the opposite lines, it makes it a palm, but this is a special palm because all of the sides are equal to one another and hence it makes it a rhombus. So I'm just going to write that to the marker. I'm going to say BC equals CD, proven above, because we just proved that. Okay. But what do I know about BC? BC doesn't only equal CD, BC equals AD. And why does BC equal AD? Because of opposite sides of a palm are equal. Okay, and what else does CD equal? CD doesn't just equal BC, but CD equals its opposite side, AD. Again, because of opposite sides of a palm that are equal. So if all of these things are equal to one another, these two are equal to these, sorry, these two are equal to each other, and these two are equal to each other, but inherently, these two on the side are also equal to each other. Do you agree that I can therefore conclude that every single line, BC, AD, CD, and AB are all equal to one another? And therefore I can say that AB, CD is a rhombus. Why is it a rhombus? All sides are equal to one another. says, if it is given that BD equals 24 centimeters, so BD is this line here, if that equals 24 centimeters, and it is given that AB equals 13 centimeters, AB is over here, which is 13 centimeters, then prove, it doesn't use that word prove, it just says, then AC equals 10 centimeters. Then AC equals 10 centimeters. Someone was hitting in my class, that's why I had to stop there. Sorry, guys. I just added in the word then prove AC equals 10 centimeters because that's what they want us to do. So they want us to go get AC, they want us to prove that this line there is 10 centimeters. Why on earth would they want us to prove that this shape is a rhombus? Remember, a rhombus has a very special quality that where these angles meet, they meet at 90 degrees. All around here, I've got 90 degree angles. 
And as soon as we see 90 degree angles, there should be something that is popping in your mind, and that something is Pythagoras, our friend. 90 degree triangles, Pythagoras. So let's use the information that we have. That line is red, BD at 24. Remember, what is the property of a path? It's diagonals bisect. That means that half there is 12, and that half there is also 12, because they bisect. What would it mean proving? If I wanted to get to 10, it would mean proving that that is 5 and that is 5, because together they give me 10. Do you agree, because you just proved it's a rhombus, that, oh, we don't even have to say anything, but all of these sides would then be 30. I'm going to look directly into this triangle, A, B, O, and I'm going to use Pythagoras, the 13 and the 12, to prove that that is 5. And I'm going to write that to the marker. So the first thing I'm going to tell the marker is about this 12 centimeter thing. I'm going to say that BO equals 12 centimeters. Why is that? Because diads of a palm um, bisect. I'm going to write bisect, but we're not cutting anything open. Bisect. Okay, then we've got 13 centimeters on this side. We've got 12 centimeters over there. There's our little right angle. I'm going to just redraw my right angle so that you can see it. My right angle triangle. We've got 12 running down here. We've got 13 over here. And we've got our right angle over here. I hope you can see that that is the hypotenuse. So I'm not going to be adding. I'm rather going to be subtracting. And I'm going to find the difference here. So using Pythagoras, I'm going to say, um, if I just label my triangle correctly, this was O, this was B, and this was A. So I've just taken that triangle and I've placed it there. I'm going to say that AB squared minus BO squared should give me AO squared. And that's thanks to Pythagoras. That's my Pythagoras theorem. The hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the two sides squared. So, AB is 13 squared, and BO is 12 squared, and that should give me AO squared. When I multiply these two and then subtract, I promise I end up with 25. 25 is equal to AO squared, but I don't want to squared. I want to square root, always my last step in Pythagoras. Therefore, AO is equal to 5 centimeters. So yes, indeed, this is five centimeters over there. Why do I need to know that this is five centimeters? Because AO plus OC should give me AB because diads are set. And that's what I'm going to write now to the marker. So then I'm going to tell the marker, well, if AO equals five centimeters, then CO must also equal five centimeters because diads of a palm are set. Diads of palm bisect. So they must both equal five centimeters. And therefore, what can I conclude? That AC equals five plus five, which is ten centimeters. And that's what they wanted me to prove. That AC equals ten centimeters. Okay. Okay, great ten. So this is your next question. It says complete the statement. If the opposite angles of a quadrilateral are equal, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. That's your first answer. Opposite angles are equal, then this whole shape is a parallelogram. And that's a hint to what we're going to do here now. They're giving you a hint. It says, in the diagram below, ABCD is a quadrilateral. Note they don't tell us it's a par, so we cannot assume the properties. E is a point on AB, so that AE is equal to AB, and EC is equal to CD, and we're told that these two lines are parallel. Let D be 2x and B1 be x. It says determine the value of x. Now, what do we have to do when we have the same variable in different places? Somehow, sorry, <laughs> somehow 
we have to bring the variables toward one another so we can put them in the same equation and solve for x. Now it's very important as to why on earth did they give us that these two lines are equal. I hope you can see it straight off the bat. Straight off the bat, this is a isosceles triangle. So not only is this x, but that angle there is x. Okay? And again, on the other side, why would they tell me that these two sides are equal? Because in this triangle, it's an isosceles triangle, not drawn to scale. But if these two are equal, then the opposite two sides must be equal. So not only is this 2x, but that's also 2x. And what do I know? I've brought my variable that is the same together. Because there they are on a straight line. And what do I know about a straight line? 180 degrees. And I can solve for x. And that's what we're going to do now. So just as we discussed, that because this angle of this side and that side are equal, the opposite side, the opposite angles are getting juggled up. Because this side and this side are equal, the opposite angles must also be equal. So B1 is x, but E1 is also x. And I'm going to write that to my marker. Angle B1 equals angle E1, and they're both equal to x. Why are they equal to x? Because there's an isosceles triangle, but I'm not allowed to write isosceles triangle. Rather, I write the angles that are opposite equal sides. And actually, as good mathematicians, you probably should have written up here in triangle ABE. So the marker knows where I'm working. In triangle ABE, I know that these things are equal because it's an isosceles triangle. And now I'm going to do exactly the same with this triangle here. Triangle ECD. And as a good mathematician, I'm going to write in triangle ECD. If these two sides are equal, then I know that the opposite angles are also equal. So both of these are equal to 2x. So what can I say? Angle D equals angle E3, which equals 2x. Why? Because it's an isosceles triangle. The angles that are opposite equal sides. And just like I said earlier, what have I done? I brought all, all of my variables together along a straight line, and I know angles on a straight line are supplementary. So I know that x plus 90, which they gave, plus 2x must equal to 180 degrees. Why? Because of angles on a straight line. Solving for x, I've got 3x equals 90 on this side. Divide both sides by 3, x is equal to 30 degrees. So I've determined the value of x. So 5.2.2 says prove that ABCD is a part. I've just proved that x is equal to 30, not 90. Thank goodness I saw that mistake. I'm quickly going to go fill in everything I know then. If x is equal to 30, that over there is 30, that over there is 30. 2x means this is 60, that is 60 over there. Okay. There's lots of ways to prove that this is a palm. What is the one way you can look at? You can see that they've already given you parallel lines. So to prove this is a palm, you could go and prove that these two lines are parallel using fun angles. And you're welcome to do that. But I'm going to use, and you will get the answer right, but I'm going to use the clue they gave us right in the beginning, that opposite angles are equal. And that's how I'm going to go about solving this. So very easy, in this triangle, I can find A, because I know together they must all equal 90 degrees, I can find C2 because I know together they must all equal 90 degrees. I can use a Z there to get C2 and I can use a Z there to get B2. And that's what I'm going to do and I'm going to show the marker. So I'm going to be a very good mathematician and I'm going to write in triangle A, B, E. And I'm going to find the missing angle. Angle A should equal 180 minus 30 minus 30, which gives me 120 degrees. 
How do I know that? Because of the interior angles of a triangle. And I'm going to go through the same in triangle um, E, C, D. So in this triangle, I know that angle C1 must equal to 180 minus 60 minus 60, which gives me 60 degrees. Interior angles of a triangle. So I'm going to pull this in. That's 60 I've just worked out. Over there, this is 120. Very quickly, I'm going to use my fun angles that I see. I see a Z there, so that means B2 is equal to 30 degrees, and that's what I'm going to write. I'm going to write angle E1 equals angle B2, which is 30 degrees, because I saw a Z. I can say alternating angles, AB is parallel to BC. And then the other shape that I see on this side is another Z that does that. So I can get C2 by getting 60. So angle E3 equals angle C2, which equals 60 degrees, because again, I saw alternating angles between AB and BC. So I found all my angles. What do you notice about this whole angle there? Do you agree it's 60 degrees? And the opposite angle, 60 degrees. What do you see about this whole angle there? It's 120 degrees. And its opposite angle, 120 degrees. Is the shape a palm? Yes, because opposite angles are equal. And that's what I'm going to say to the marker now. So, therefore, we can say that angle B is equal to 60 degrees because of 30 plus 30. And we can also say, therefore, that angle C is equal to 120 degrees because of 60 plus 60. So, therefore, what can I conclude? I can conclude that angle A equals angle C. They're both equal 120 degrees. And I can conclude that angle B equals angle D. They're both equal, 60 degrees. And therefore, because my opposite angles are equal, I can say that A, B, C, D is a palm because opposite angles are equal. Okay, just um, bearing in mind, why would there be a little triangle on the inside? Well, perhaps you got into this triangle with that 60, for example, and instead of using a Z, you could have used interior angles of a triangle to get that 30, for example. There were lots of ways. Always remember that if you were to prove that these two sides are parallel, what would I need to prove if sides are parallel? I need to find fun angles. And what you notice, and that actually may have been a faster way to do it, because I knew this was 120, I knew this was 60. What do I see between 120 and 60? But together, I get 180. So therefore, these two have to be parallel. And then it would be a palm. Why? Because opposite sides are parallel. So there's lots of ways to prove a palm. You just have to pick one, focus in on it, and try and get to what you chose. Okay, this is the last question, and it's a repeat of the question that we skipped on the very first page. It's just a repeat of one another, so it's the same question, and this is the last example we're doing today. It says, in the quadrilateral given, again, this is not telling me that it's a par. I cannot use any of the par properties. It says, the diagonals AC, AC and BD bisect at O. What on earth does bisect at O mean? It means that that line is equal to that line, and that line is equal to that line. O has cut the diagonals in half. It says, if AC equals 4X, so AC, this whole line, equals, sorry, 4XY, and BC, this whole line here, equals x squared plus y squared and well another one bd this whole line there equals 2x squared minus 2y squared prove that abcd is a rhombus 
Now, we can prove things are rhombuses by either finding that all the sides are equal. But the other important thing about a rhombus is that what happens when they meet here in the middle? They all meet at 90 degrees. And that's what I'm going to go ahead and prove. I'm going to prove that these angles meet at 90 degrees. So how am I going to go about doing this? I'm going to zoom into one of these rectangles and I'm going to choose this rectangle because it has the most detail given. It's got a red line, it's got a purple line, and it's got an orange line. So I'm going to zoom into this rectangle, BOC, not rectangle, triangle, sorry. I'm going to zoom into that triangle, BOC, and I'm going to try to show that O is 90 degrees. How do I show things are 90 degrees? Our dear friend, Pythagoras. Okay, so that means I need the length of this purple line. I know it's been bisected, so it means it's been cut in half. So if the whole line is 2x squared minus 2y squared, I hope you can see that this half must be x squared minus y squared, and that half there is x squared minus y squared. Why? If I had to add x squared minus y squared with another x squared minus y squared, do you see I've got 2x squared minus 2y squared? So I've got that half there. And then I'm going to look at my orange line. If the whole line is 4xy, I hope you can agree that because it's been bisected, they told us it was bisected at O, that this must be 2xy and this must be 2xy. How come? Because when I say 2xy plus another 2xy, I get the total 4xy. So that's my little triangle that I'm going to use. If I had to draw it on the side here, it's very difficult to draw a 90 degree triangle, but that's 90 degrees. I've got x squared plus y squared over here. I've got 2xy and I've got x squared minus y squared. And I'm going to use the converse theorem of Pythagoras. What is the converse theorem of Pythagoras? I don't know this is 90 degrees. I'm going to assume that this is 90 degrees, assume that this is the hypotenuse, and I'm going to check, does the square of the sum of the two sides equal to the square of the hypotenuse? And if it does, I will know that it is 90 degrees. And that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, so please don't forget your statement in your reason table. I'm just going to work over here, and everything over here is just going to be my statement because it takes quite a bit of working out. So this whole thing here is going to be my statement. So I'm going to use the converse theorem of Pythagoras. I'm assuming that this is 90 degrees if it's a rhombus. So there is my hypotenuse. So I want to know if I take the square of these two sides and I add them together, am I going to get that squared? So I'm going to take AO, sorry, not AO, but rather BO squared, BO squared plus CO squared, and I'm going to try and get BC squared. So let's see what happens. BO is x squared minus y squared, x squared minus y squared, and I'm going to square that. CO is 2xy, I'm going to square that. And BC is x squared plus y squared, and I'm going to square that. I hope you can remember with this bracket and that bracket that I cannot bond the two in. I can only bond the two in here because this is a monomial. If it's got a binomial square, I have to do two brackets and I have to foil it. So I'm just going to do it all in different colors just so we can see. So this I'm going to open up into two brackets as x squared minus y squared times x squared minus y squared. Right. In the middle, I can bond that 2 in, so I get 2 squared, which is 4, x squared, y squared. And on the equal sign out there, I'm going to open up two brackets, 
which is x squared plus y squared times x squared plus y squared. And I'm now going to do FOIL in orange. And I hope you remember how to do FOIL. This first term must go to both terms. The second term must go to both terms. And I end up with x4 minus x squared y squared minus x squared y squared plus y4. In the middle, you can check me. You can pause the video and you can go and check this on your own if I'm going too fast. But this is a really good, super long video. On this side, I've got x4 plus x squared y squared plus x squared y squared plus y4. And I'm going to gather like terms. So, x squared y squared, x squared y squared, 4x squared y squared, all of these are like terms. So I'm going to gather them. My x squared doesn't change, my, my x4 doesn't change, it doesn't have a friend, I've got x4. But 4x squared y squared minus 2 of those, I'm left with 2x squared y squared. And then the y to the power of 4 doesn't have a friend, so it stays like that. On this side, here are my two like terms, so I gather them. The x4 doesn't have a friend, but I've got two x squared, y squared, and I've got y4. Hey Presto, what do you know? The sum of the square of the two sides definitely does equal the square of the hypotenuse. This is equal to that. So therefore I can conclude in my statement and reason timetable, Therefore, a table, I can conclude that A, B, C, D is a par. Why is it a par? Because angle B, O, C equals 90 degrees. How do I know that? Sorry, not is a par, but rather is a rhombus. And B, O, C equals 90 degrees. How do I know that? Because I just used the converse theorem of Pythagoras to prove it. I took the sum of the square of the two sides and I proved that it equaled the square of the hypotenuse. And therefore it's a rhombus. And that's the end of your examples. I hope you remember it. You are now going to use this piece of paper over here. And it's got your exercise A. And you're going to do the whole exercise quite a long one but we'll give you two days to complete it we'll put the memo up there and then we're going to finally move on to the merging point theorem please get this euclidean geometry under control because without it you're going to struggle through midpoints have a good day great teams